Praise the Lord. Shall we rise up as we pray together? Almighty God, we thank you for this new year. Thank you for preserving us, bringing us to this place at this time. Lord, we are praying that this new year will be really new in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray everything we've missed in the past, this year according to your promise, we're going to have in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray, Lord, that we we'll also live and so pray and so believe that will please you at every time in Jesus' name. Amen. And the blessings you give to your beloved, you'll give to your people this year. Every individual, every family, every, everyone coming to this place and worshiping with the people of God in all our various locations. This year, Lord, will be good news and testimony in every mouth in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless your people today. Amen. All over this nation, all over this continent of Africa and beyond, Lord, we pray this day to speak your word to every heart. Amen. And your blessing will enrich every soul in Jesus' name. Amen. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much and God bless you. We're looking at Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. We're reading from verse 12. And the manna ceased on the morrow. After they had eaten of the old corn of the land, neither had the children of Israel manna any more. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. I'm going to repeat that last part. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. This is the year. The Lord has brought us to this new year. And the Lord is telling us we need now to cross over to Canaan land. This new year. That's actually what the children of Israel did. And as they did that, they came to the land of Canaan, the land of promise. And the word of God said in that passage I just read now, that even the things they ate, and the life they lived, and the provision the Lord had given unto them, that that changed. The Lord had told them in Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1, I'm reading there from verse 6. See what the Lord told them. The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. They spent a lot of time in the wilderness until the Lord began to tell them, don't you think it's time to move on? And the Lord is challenging us the same way. If you look at the past years that have gone, and you look at the things that surround you, and the things you desire, and the things you urge, and then you compare what your dreams and the visions are, you might be telling yourself exactly what the Lord wants you to tell yourself. Ye had dwelt long enough in this mount, verse 7. Turn you and take your journey and go to the mount. Turn you. Take your journey. Move on. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. Then we turned and we took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days, and the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain longer enough. Many times we do not evaluate our lives. Many times we do not take inventory of where we have been, what we have done, what we have got, what we have received, where we live. But the Lord takes note of everything and is reminding us that things 
will have to change and things will change. Ye have come past this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. He's saying, move on and go up. Now, by the way, when we obey that and we turn and we move on, what is going to be the result? We're looking at Deuteronomy again, chapter 11, verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. That your days may be multiplied. I need an amen. amen. And the days of your children and our children. As in the land, in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. Now the last part you want to underline. As the days of where? Heaven upon the earth. What a great proposal. What a great proposition. What a great provision. What a great promise. The Lord had for them. He wanted them to live and to have the days of heaven upon the earth. And I want you to begin to think about the earth and also heaven. And you think about what we have on earth. And you think about the things we've heard about heaven. And many of us will think about heaven and will say, by and by, all the goodness of heaven, all the glory of heaven, and all the riches of heaven, all the inheritance of heaven, by and by, they'll be mine. For the Lord is saying, I even want you to add a foretaste of heaven here on earth. That you will taste, that you will have, that you will possess the very days of heaven upon the earth. If the children of Israel had only known, and if they had only cooperated with God, this is what they would have heard. Now if you can stretch your imagination a little, and you can ask yourself, what is there in heaven? that we have not seen here on earth. The peace of mind, the abundant supply, the joy, the happiness, the freedom from the harassment of every enemy, and the protection that is perpetual and perfect, and the provision that will satisfy us in a very nature, every part of us within us, what is there here on earth that is not in heaven? There's no sickness in heaven. There's no calamity in heaven. And there's no sorrow in heaven. And there's no defeat in heaven. And there is nothing to mourn about in heaven. And the Lord says, I want to bring heaven down to you over here. Can he do it? And this year, that's what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, you have suffered in all. Move on. And the Lord is saying, we have been in the wilderness long enough. Let's move on. And he wants us to cross over unto Canaan land this new year. By the way, as you read verse 11, come on to verse 31 of that same Deuteronomy. So you know what he's talking about. When he said, I'll give you the days of heaven here on earth. In verse 31, for ye shall pass over Jordan. To go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you. Ye shall possess it and ye shall dwell therein. That's what the Lord is talking about. He's talking about that glory land. And that wonderful thing we're going to possess. If you will believe the Lord, this year is going to be different. If you will do exactly what the Lord has said. Even when you don't understand. And the Lord said, days of heaven will come here on earth. In your personal life, in your family, in your place of work, in your community where you live. In our church, in every local church, it will be so. Crossing over to Canaan land this new year. How will that happen? Three points we're going to look at. Number one. Leaving the wilderness behind for Canaan land. We have to do that. We have to leave something behind. All those experiences of uh, the wilderness, we're leaving that behind this year. Leaving the wilderness behind for Canaan land. Number two, living by the word. Believing the Lord. 
living by the word, believing the Lord. Number three, loving and worshiping before the Lord. Loving and worshiping before the Lord. As you look at this, Joshua chapter 5, from which I read to you verse 12. I want you to see something from verse 5. Joshua chapter 5, verse 5. Now, all the people that came out were circumcised. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war died in the wilderness by the way after they came out of Egypt. In verse 6, so that's verse, five, that's verse 4, I've read. Now all the people that came out were circumcised. All the people that were born in the wilderness by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them, they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war that came out of Egypt were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord swear that he would not show them the land, which the Lord swear unto their fathers, that he will give us a land of flesh with milk and honey, and their children whom they raised up in, the, in their stage. Then Joshua circumcised, for they were circumcised because they, were, they had not circumcised them by the way. Now it tells us that these people that were about to cross over to the land of Canaan, they had to leave the wilderness behind. Would you have that in your mind? Hold that in your thoughts. Believe that in your heart. That as we are moving on to Canaan land, we cannot live in the wilderness and in Canaan at the same time. One will have to go. We have to leave one behind and then pursue the other. That means then that wilderness life we're going to leave behind. By the way, what characterized the wilderness life? So that we know the wilderness that we're leaving behind. Exodus chapter 16. In Exodus chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 2. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron where? In the wilderness. That was a characteristic of the wilderness life. Dry, dreary, very dangerous for them. And because of the things they went through in the wilderness, their attitude, their response was always to grumble. Always to murmur. And the Lord is saying, as we come to this new year, if we're going to have, and I know we're going to have, I said we're going to have, if we're going to possess, if we're going to enjoy, and if we're going to keep the blessings, that is the overflowing blessing of the Canaan land, there is something you have to do. You need to leave the, can the, the wilderness lie behind. That is the wilderness of murmuring, of grumbling, of complaining. We need to grow up so that our response to any challenge that comes will not be a response of murmuring, of grumbling, and uh, of complaining. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 7. Leaving the wilderness behind for Canaan large. And every day you need to be checking up when temptation comes to act the way we acted before, to talk the way we talked before, to manifest the attitude we manifested before you want to ask yourself, is this Canaan life or wilderness life? Is this Canaan attitude or is it wilderness attitude? Is it the position of wilderness or is it the position and the passion and the attitude and the lifestyle of Canaan? Check up. And if you find that 
this looks like wilderness journey this looks like wilderness attitude you remember as we're going to get into the place the lord has provided for us in this new year the lord is saying number one if you're going to step into this canaan land and if you're going to have all the blessings of the riches and inheritance of canaan and the spots in you have to give you leave the wilderness behind that's what we're going to do i said that's what we're going to do deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 7 Remember and forget not how thou provoked the Lord thy God to us in the wilderness. And that was a scene that really happened in the wilderness. And that's the reason why they spent such a long time there. You know, even the people of the world, they say this way. They say, what you resist persists. What you resist persists. In the wilderness, there were a lot of things they resisted. And that resistance also brought the sin, the perseverance of that sin. Because they murmured and because they grumbled and they said no. The things they said no to and they said they no with the wrong attitude, with the wrong tone, with the wrong disposition, and with the wrong language. The things persisted. Watch you resist persists and you see what they did in the wilderness they provoked the lord unto us that was their wilderness characteristic and the lord is saying this year whatever comes and whatever goes whatever happens whatever does not happen the lord is saying he wants to move us to canaan land and to move us to canaan land all that provocation all that rough language all that wrong attitude, all that language of unbelief, we'd rather die in the wilderness, all that soul that knows no check and no limit and no scriptural bounds, all that will leave behind. We're looking at Psalm 78, Psalm 78, leaving the wilderness behind for Canaan land. Psalm 78, I'm reading from verse 17. Psalm 78, verse 17. And they sinned yet more against, against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. They sinned, you see, the life in the wilderness was a life of rising and falling. They sinned, then they repent, then they sinned, then they repent, then they sinned, then they repent. Then they repent and the Lord is saying, that's not Canaan lifestyle. That's not the life in the promised land. I want you to have the life of heaven here on earth. And if you're going to have life of heaven here on earth, the rising and falling, the sinning and repenting, going into the valley and coming to the mountain, up and down, that kind of unstable life. That has to stop. It's wilderness life. But you know when you come to the Lord, you are born again, you are converted. And you lay everything upon the altar. And you say, Lord, here is my life. I'm going to worship you consistently every day of my life. You are crossing over to Canaan land. You will cross over. And the sin yet more against him by provoking the most high in the wilderness. Verse 18, and he tempted God in their heart by asking for meat for their lust, asking for meat for their inordinate desire. They were not seeking the glory of God. They were not seeking to please God. They were not seeking that God will be happy with their lives. All the selfishness or self-centeredness they manifested is what we're to leave behind. To live that kind of self-centered and selfish life of the wilderness. To leave all that behind. And then to understand 
that for the rest of your life, if anything will matter at all, it should be the glory of God. To seek and to understand that in your lifestyle, in your disposition, in your attitude, in your desire, the only thing you want is the glory of God. You know, the wilderness life is the glory of man. The glory of man, the satisfaction of man, the happiness of man, the loss and the desires of man that they want to but now as you cross over to Canaan land, all you want now is, does this bring glory to God? He has raised us up so that we can bring glory to his name. Not that we can have any kind of ego or pride that we want us to have our way, our loss, our selfish, inordinate desires, but the desire of the Lord. And then it says in verse 19, Yea, they speak against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? You know, wilderness life, wilderness life is a life of questioning. Questioning 